welcome every one of you. Thank you so much for coming to church and coming to church on time. We are doing a series on wealth generation. And God is enjoining wealth to the family. Wealth is given to family, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. Not only to these fathers, but for their families to multiply. God works multiplication. And that's what we are given. Peter, uh, John put up for me Deuteronomy 8.18. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, It is he, God, who gives you power to get wealth. So after you have enjoined yourself to a family, you need to get wealth. So this wealth is given by God to you. But remember that the Lord your God gives you the power to gain wealth in order to confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is today. Moses is speaking to the children of Israel and he says God is going to confirm the covenant about enriching you because he said I'll take you out of the land of Egypt and plant you into a land flowing with milk and the honey so there are three powers power number one John 1 12 as many as received him he gave them the power the right to belong to God. That power you have already, <coughs> sorry, you have already received. That's why you belong to God. We have received the power to become. Power number two, Acts 1.8. And you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. You are full of the Holy Ghost. If you are delayed, disturb us. We must get you filled with the Holy Ghost so that you receive that ability, that power to live a holy life, to live above the devil, to live above things. Power, power. And the third type of power, Deuteronomy 8.18, ability to make wealth. That power is on you. That power is coming upon you. Every one of us has that ability. What we lack is the knowledge over the principles, over the bylaws of wealth generation. And so in a very slow manner, we want to go through some of, so that it gives you an appetite to check the word. Bylaw number one. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Genesis, yeah. While the earth endureth, remaineth. Seed time, harvest time, shall never cease. Cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall never cease. Some of this is not for us because we live in this region where there is no winter and where there is no summer. In this part of the world, we have two seasons, rainy, cold, rainy, dry. So, winter is not ours. Summer is not ours. But rain, we know when it rains, we know dry. So every one of you know, when rains come, it is associated with the sowing. So this by law tells us that sowing will always be there. And whoever participates in sowing will do what? We will participate in a harvest. So if you don't 
participate, you have no harvest. So remember that, sowing, sowing. Let me give you a few more scriptures so that you understand. John, let's go to Ecclesiastes 11. So seed time will always be there. Harvest time will always be there because the earth is not going anywhere. Now, cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. That needs no elaboration. Just after many days, it's back. Let's move on. Let's move on. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. Yeah? Be large in what you are doing. Next, if the clouds be full of rain, they shall empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree falleth to the south, toward the north, in the place where it tree, the tree falleth, there shall it be. Verse 4. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. If you look at the clouds, you shall not sow. He that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. So there are people who will never sow. Although they have the knowledge that seed time and harvest time is there. They have the head knowledge. They don't have the practical knowledge. So they will say, ah, clouds. They will not sow. And so they miss the harvest according to the truth of Genesis 8.22. Let's continue. Next verse. As thou knowest not the way of the spirit, nor how bones do grow in the womb of our heart that is with the child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. The husbands whose wives are pregnant, they don't even know how the bones grow inside that womb, even the mother. So the same it is. So you're using your head knowledge, I must understand the principle, I must, I must, you'll be left behind. Next, verse 6. In the morning sow thy seed, don't withhold your hand. You do not know which seed will come, either the morning or the evening or both. So you shall prosper in all. So in the morning, so. In the evening, so. In the noontime, so. It is just encouraging us to be more operating the truth of sowing. So sowing has so many um, bylaws that are by it. He that soweth shall participate in the harvest. He that sows bountifully, kwa wingi, shall harvest bountifully. He that sows sparingly shall harvest sparingly. Let's see, verse 7 says what? Verse 8. If a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness as they shall be many as that seemeth. You are going to live many days. You have to tell yourself, I'm here many days. Sickness shall not remove you. I thought I'd get an amen. You are not dying tomorrow. I'm preaching to people that are going to see many seasons. <laughs> Ezekiel asked for extended time to finish his projects. You have time to do your projects. 
You are not going to ask God to add your time. You have years to your account. Say amen. So if you have a project you have not done, you have time. You have opportunity. Because God gives you time. It is a sad thing when you come to the end of life and you still have stuff to do. Because you have been sleeping in the class. We shall not allow that to happen to us. I want you to be industrious. What is the other word? I want you to be diligent in what you are doing. You finish one, you get into another. You get into another, you get into another. Because you have so much to do. Time is on our side. Lift up your hand and say, I have time to do what I want to do. I must do it now. So check with yourself as I teach. Where are you late? With what are you late? How can you catch over? You need speed anointing. To catch up with some things. So life is an opportunity to get things done. One of the things God expects you to do while you are here is to amass wealth. To get wealth so that you can pass it on to the next generation through your children. Now, some of the principles of God are very sweet. God is expecting you to work, buy lands, build houses. Put up for me Deuteronomy 8. Let's use the big Bible so that you can see it. God does not want you to live in a, to live in a, in a, in a, in a roof, in a grass house. Go straight to verse 11. I don't have time for all these scriptures. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. Now, how do you forget the Lord? Where? By not keeping his commandments. That's how we shall know you forgot God. Because you stopped being a tither. You stopped being a giver. You stopped supporting the weak. You forgot what God said. So, when you do that, you have forgotten God. So, there is a warning here. Moses, remember what we handled? He's standing before very weak people that have come from Egypt. He's putting a name before them, a work before them. This is what God is saying. Beware. When it has happened, you don't forget the Lord your God. I'm talking to you, brethren, not because it has happened to you, but because it is going to happen to you. We have to agree that God is on our way somewhere. God is en route to bring us somewhere. Genesis, Exodus, God says to Moses, I will bring my people to a large land. Large, flowing with the rivers of water, type 1. Rivers of milk, type 2. Rivers of honey, type 3. They needed to see River Jordan so that they can know there is another river, not with the water, but with the, with the milk. But when you follow closely, there was no river of milk. They had to milk the cows at the level of large. So God was using this as what? Pictorial? As what? A type of? As what? So that they understand, they, oh, that river was flowing with water. There is going to be a river flowing with milk. That river of milk now is coming from your home to the dairy, wherever it is. Let me say this in Kiswahili. Uomto wa maziwa unatiririka kutoka kwa boma yako kwenda KCC. Amen. The river is not there now, but we have to establish the river. So work with me as I teach the word as you apply. Right now your home does not have a river. Your home has a scarcity. The cow that is in your home is a one liter 
in the morning cow, one liter in the evening. We are going to bring 20 liter one milking asubui, 20 liter milking lunchtime, 20 liter milking jioni. Can the men say amen? amen? Come on, men, you are the cow men. You say a bigger amen. amen. You must have a cow, not of one liter in the morning. Mwaniki ngombe ya lita moja out. Bucha, mama, yu yende kwa bucha. <laughs> Mwambie mze mwanika ya ya 20 lita. So that, no, I want to prove to you mathematically, ili tuyone. One liter asubui, one liter jion is two liters. How are you going to make a river over that? Ata ikienda KCC. Ni mbili. But one cow, 20, and you have 10. So in the morning, you have how many? 200. 200 liters. 200 liters in the evening. 400. I was preaching in Masai land this week. They told me a liter of milk is 70 shillings. I've never found this anywhere else. So let's work with the rate. 70 times 400. Is it not 28,000? I'm only 2,800. 2,800. What we did in the other service, we must calculate. 2,800. Liter, uh, 28,000. Yeah, 28,000. Times 30. 700, eh? The nyingi? 1,000. Nige kupa 840,000, your color will change. <laughs> eh? If I just drop 840,000 in your hands, month one, because there's a second month that is coming. So the question is, Daddy, why don't you have the cow? One, ignorance. You didn't know it was a wealth generation of God, commanded by God. So, we have not because we have not fully complied. So, a river from your house, there will be a pickup loaded with milk to dairy or a boda boda, whatever means you're going to use. Details are not mine. Mine is to teach the word. So, this man is going to have verse 12 when you have eaten and you are full there now it comes and you have built a goodly house this is difficult King James English get me a simpler one I have many versions in the computer there when you have eaten at full and uh -huh, this is good Beautiful house. I'm casting a vision. You are not supposed to live in a shanty. It's not Pastor Charles who is saying the Bible. Beautiful. So you men seated here in this house, do you have a beautiful house? What you have built, do you think it compares? Or do you have to pull down and build again? To comply to scripture, we have to do whatever it you need. So if you are living in a thatched house, you have not begun. A beautiful house. So you need to get an architecture to interpret this for you. Architect, not architecture. Mr. Architect, what is a beautiful house? And he draws for you so that you can see the image in the computer. Because that's what God is saying. I know what you are thinking. Where will the money come from? From what I'm going to teach. The money is not coming from your meager income, salary. Uh -uh. The money is going to come to build that beautiful house from the total sum of what God is saying. Do you want us to handle the total sum right now? Because you are already tied with a salary. Limiting salary. All the time tying you down. There is going to be a tithe from fruit trees. 
Stream one. There is going to be a tithe from sale of animals. Stream two. We will sell bulls. We will sell cows. You are going to have plowing auction like Elijah. Elisha, sorry. He plowed with the 24. Do you know the rate of hiring a plowing auction? 2,000 an acre. So if you have got 20 oxen, that is 10 pairs, 10 yoke. Or if you have 24 like Elisha, he had 24 yoke. Now you should be doing the mathematics. I want to analyze this for you so that you see it in the figures you understand. So you are two bulls. They go to dig, they go to, 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 to plow for Brother John, five acres at the rate of 2,000. How much is going to come in that day? 10,000. And tomorrow, this is business at the height of rain. You have to book the cows. Now I'm talking village life, not city life. You go to this mze, his cows are out. This mze, his cows are out. So you have really have to book. So come, come. Come. Going, coming, one acre, two acre, three acre, five acre, 10K. Empesayako. Tete, that is income from oxen. You told me 28,000 from milk per day. That is 10,000 per day. Mr. Kamau, listen to me. You have not sold chicken. You have not picked eggs. Did we analyze with this service? I have not taught this in this service. They told me in the other service that an egg, Kienyeji, is 20 shillings. So this chicken of yours, they drop an egg. They have dropped 20 shillings. And you don't have one chicken. Are you cursed to have one chicken? You have many. A hundred, two hundred, times twenty. Let's work with a hundred. So if you have a hundred kienyeji, they drop a hundred eggs every day. A hun they drop 20 shillings every day. That's 2,000. My mathematics is ahead. We are still going. So, eggs. Then the chicken themselves. One muela is 500, mama. When your mama project? 700, I'm corrected here. You're going 1,000. The expert is seated here. So, you take it. Me, I like, because the Bible said the large, we are not doing little. You know where the Bible says large, Exodus chapter 3. I'll take them to a large land. So we are not selling our chicken little, we are selling large. A hundred, each 700. Madam, uliendanga shule, ulisoma esabu, hiyo kisipanya ningapi. 700 times a hundred. Come on, Regina. <laughs> you are looking at me and not giving me an answer. Friday. Who has the answer? 600 you have the answer. 100 times 700. You have two zeros. 70,000. 70. Na kuna ingine 28. Ya maziwa. 840, thank you, ma'am. And close to a million, eh? Sure. Really? Iyo ni amwezi. Mwezi. Eh, atunafanya hisabu na hii church. Nataka wote wao waone. Waziseme ni mambo ya Pastor Charles. Ni bibilia. Mitunda. Iyo ni maziwa. Iyo ni makienyeji, mayai, na kuku, na mwela, na jogo. Tuingia kwa miti mitunda. Mana wazee mko hapa, muna miti mitunda. Mti mtunda ni upi? Muembe. Mtunda muavokado. Mtunda mpopo. Mchungwa. When you put this in a mathematical analysis, you really pity yourself. 
Where have I been? What's happening here? So God is saying, there is a tithe in fruit trees. So when you sell your mango trees, you bring a tithe. Me, I want to see the tithe, because that is where I'm concerned. The 90 is yours. I stand here to represent God. How will I know you sold your mangoes? I won't know, because right now the tithe you are paying, you don't even separate. We have been paying general tithe. So let us separate. Actually, some of us have been paying what is called white-collar job, employment tithe. You have never paid tithe of your self-employment, of your sowing of the land. Pojo. Who sold Pojo? Who sold maize? So when you analyze these lines and streams of income, you pity yourself. Where have I been? Why didn't I sow? That's where I'm making my point so that I can move on. Because you live in the city, because you are employed at KPA, because you are employed at post office, you divorced yourself from wealth generation principles. Isaac sowed in the land, and the same year, he ripped a hundredfold. 